They say the gun is not a lethal weapon. It's the finger on the trigger that does the damage. It's the same with the train. The Industrial Revolution made workhorses redundant. They were put out to graze. Horsepower from smoke belching machines on wheels now took the strain. Everyone could have gained. Some people did get rich, very rich. Most were losers. With globalization and the post-industrial revolution, nations are now scrambling to invest in a new generation of high-speed trains. Hundreds of billions of dollars sunk into infrastructure that will cut the cost of making and marketing goods to the world's consumers. Faster speeds. More miles of tracks connecting the continent but a terrible price will be paid by most people. The problem is not with the train or with the people who man the engines. It's with the way governments pay for the capital they invest in the tracks and the rolling stock. People who travel on trains are made to pay twice for the privilege. First, governments tax their incomes. In addition, however, Ticket prices are raised to cover some of the cost of the capital investment. Do people get a fair deal out of this financial policy? The investment seems worthwhile. The payback can be like winning the lottery. Investment in railways yields huge profits. That's what happened when Britain's taxpayers funded the extension to the underground railway in London called the Jubilee. Adding 10 more stations to the line cost taxpayers three and a half billion pounds. The payback was a fantastic 13 and a half billion pounds. How did this happen? The Jubilee line raised productivity in the London economy. For every one pound invested, there was a payback of nearly four pounds. That's what railways do, make the economy more efficient. Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, trains have cut the costs of transportation. Reduced costs meant higher profits. But who pocketed the fat profits? Not the taxpayers who funded the railway. And wages were not raised. What about the shareholders who invested their money in the rolling stock? Competition made sure that they did not reap super profits. Economists say that the extra gains from trains are externalized. This means that governments allow the extra value to cascade into the pockets of land owners. This financial history teaches us that trains pay for themselves. Invest in a railway and it more than covers its costs. This leads to two important insights into the way we are governed. First, governments could pay for railways without taxing their citizens. Second, the extra value created by trains could be collected and used by governments to cut the taxes that burden the economy. But governments choose to flout these sensible policies. They tax people to pay for the trains and roads. Taxes destroy jobs and unemployment drives down the wages of people who are still working. The owners of land pocket the super profits generated by trains. They laugh all the way to the bank. Is that fair? Don't blame the train driver. It's not his hands on the financial trigger.